Hey everybody, Mr. Bell's here. Um, doing a lesson right now. Yep. Uh, happy uh, uh, Happy holidays. Merry Christmas to you. Uh, lesson on section 1-1 out of the pre-calc uh, textbook, pre-calc A, section 1-1. It's going to be a lot about functions and solutions and how to be able to tell if you're given data um, to find an equation, given an equation to be able to represent it graphically, um, being able to give an equation, get data, or uh, being able to give a graph, uh, uh, go with that data. So uh, basically moving between those three things, like if I have data, um, can I graph it and plot it and see what it looks like? Does it look parabolic? Does it look uh, like a square root function? Does it look like an inverse function? Um, and then uh, can then I write an equation for it? Because if I can write an equation for it, then I can represent other values uh, for anything. So like given an x, find a y, given a y, find an x. So it's kind of one of the big goals in mathematics is to be able to move between those three things. And, and we're going to try and do that right now. Here. Okay. So, uh, again, a reminder that you guys can actually read in your textbooks, like these, these things right here. Um, besides just watching some of these videos or, or coming to this stuff. Here are some of the things uh, we're going to talk about. Okay. Uh, so the first thing that you see right here is uh, I see a bunch of data. I'm like, man. So I don't know. Does is this stuff look linear? Uh, does this stuff look quadratic. Um, so again, quick little things for you. Uh, linears look like this. Quadratics look like this. Cubics look like this. Uh, exponentials look like this. Inverse functions uh, look like this. And depending on how um, any of these mathematical relationships happen, these ones, uh, root functions look like this. Uh, and we're going to talk about this in this unit, uh, about 12 basic mathematical relationships. So how can I just tell based on this data? Well, one of the things I could do is I can come over here and I could plot this stuff. So I know my y's have to go from 1 to 9. So let's go uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I can just kind of plot them there. However, my x's, I got 4 to 44. So maybe I'm going to go here. I'm going to go 10, 20, 30, 40, uh, 50, like this, and I'm going to go ahead and plot some of these things. So 4 gives me 1, so 4 is probably, you know, just under halfway there, and then 8 gives me 3, that's about right there, and 16 is about right there, that gives me 5, um, it's about like that. And you're like, ooh, that could be a line, maybe it could be a line, I don't know. 28 gives me 7. And I'm like, ooh, I don't know that that's necessarily linear. It looks like it's kind of teetering off right now. And then 44 way over here gives me 9. And that definitely um, doesn't look like a line. So it looks like, it looks like pattern-wise that maybe my dad is kind of looking like that. Which means that I think that that might be a radical in terms of the relationship. So again, so here's data. Here's a graph. And then maybe there's an equation that I can do. And I'm going to kind of show you some stuff in the graphing calculator right now. And I'll do this in a lot more detail later, but we're going to at least start with some stuff. So here we go. Pop that calculator on. Uh, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to stat. Uh, so you can see that right there, stat. And then edit. And this has a lot of data in it. And, uh, I snuck this out of the... Uh, uh, is uh, what do we have? See how much data we have in there? It's not too much. I think I'm just gonna reset it here. So sh hopefully she won't know. I got this from Mrs. Kaiser's room. Don't tell her. Um, so second in the plus sign and number four it says clear all my lists. So if I hit enter, that means all that data that you just saw is gonna be gone. So I can start fresh and clear. So I'm gonna put in this data. So the x values I'm gonna put in L1 going straight down. The y values I'm going to put in L2 going straight down. So here we go. So 4, enter, 8, enter, 16, enter, 28, enter, 44, enter. And you guys need to be trying these while we're doing this. 1, enter, 3, enter, 5, enter, 7, enter, 9, enter. So like that, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Good. 
So now I'm going to go here um, to my y equals. Uh, and I'll make sure anything that I might have had in there, I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to go second y equals because I want to actually plot these points. I'm going to do a scatter plot, which is uh, right here. So I'm going to hit enter to turn plot number one on. I want it to be a scatter plot. And then right down here, I need it to be L1 and L2 because that's where I put my data. So uh, again, L1 and L2, you can see this. One button is L1. Number two button is L2. I just need to use the second function and those buttons to be able to get that up. So second L1, enter. Second L2, enter. Awesome. So um, I can go ahead and hit zoom six and look at the graph and I only see two points. Well, the reason I only see two points is because the first two points are the only ones that fit in that negative 10 to negative 10 window. And that's where this is. This goes from an X of negative 10 to positive 10 and a Y from positive 10 down to negative 10. So you can see that my X values of 16, 28 and 44 those are way over there on my screen. So I need to go on my window and I'm gonna make that 50. And now I think everything should fit in on my screen. And you can see that those points match this thing. So this looks like a square root function. And again, we're gonna get into this in much more detail later, um, but I'm gonna show you some quick stuff on here. So if I go stat into my middle column calc, in data A, you should have done things called linear regressions, which finds a line that goes through this data. And we can find a line that's pretty close to this, but you can tell that this definitely has curvature. So this really isn't a line. It's actually a power function. Um, and again, like I said, we'll talk about it more, but line is number four, parabola is number five, uh, cubic function, like it says, cubic quartic, that's a degree four polynomial. Uh, that's just another way to represent a line. Uh, that's a natural log regression. So if we're dealing with uh, the inverse of exponential functions, there's an exponential regression. But again, this data isn't exponential. And there's a power regression. So I believe the data is uh, a power regression. That just means that it's going to a power. And yes, uh, a square root function is x to the one half power or one third power, one fourth power, whatever it is that'll get you that shape. So I'm gonna do a power regression A, I'm gonna hit enter. I'm gonna have it come from data L1 and data L2. And then uh, I'm actually gonna store my regression equation in Y1. So I'll repeat this here and you'll hear this in class too. So vars, Y vars, function, and Y1. So what that's gonna do, it's gonna find the best equation for this data that models a, models a power regression, and it's gonna copy that equation into Y1 so that I don't have to retype it myself, and now I just hit calculate. Now, if you're on an older calculator, it will automatically assume L1 and L2. You just have to put, after it says power regression at the top of your calculator, you have to get it to put the Y1 in through what I just said, vars, Y vars function, and Y1. Okay, so there's my calculate, and look at that. It tells me that this is my best power. Uh, that's my, sorry, my coefficient to my A, and my best power is to raise to the 0.88, or almost like 9 tenths uh, as a fraction. And then the correlation coefficient is 0.972. Again, you guys should remember from data A that uh, anything close to one or negative one is like amazingly good so this is pretty strong. This is saying this equation should go through this data pretty well. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hit graph and you can see, look at, look at that. That's a pretty good model uh, for that data, okay? Uh, again, it might go a little bit high and might not be perfect for each one of those points, uh, but that's, that's pretty good. I think that's gonna give you a better model than a, than a line's gonna give you, okay? And especially if I went out a few more, uh, gave another data point way out there beyond on the axis. Okay, so hopefully that's a good start for you on that, on the transference between um, data, graphical, and then in this case a power. And one more time I'll show you that power. Uh, that power equation would look like this. 0.375 uh, times x 
and then I think we said it was point, let me check again, I think, 0 0.88, 0 0.88 as the exponent, that was my power. So this equation helps model that data. And some of the equations are going to be a lot easier than that one. I just wanted you to start off with a big messy one that you hadn't seen before. Okay, so um, here's another thing that I can do is I want to be able to compare functions, okay? So um, I want to know what's a better deal. Okay, so I like this pizza. This pizza's good. I have a 16-inch round for $10.99, or I can get a 10 by 12 rectangle for $7.99. Uh, both of them seem to be pretty good prices, The the pizza is really good. They're the same thickness, so we're not talking about volume, okay? We're just talking about surface area. And some of you are like, well, I like the way a rectangle looks better. Well, I like the way a, a round looks better. I honestly don't care right now. I just want to know which one's the better deal. Well, I can't just say this one's the better deal because it's $7.99. It's less. I need to compare price to area. So. How much area, how much pizza do I get in this? Well, 10 by 12 is 120 square inches. Well, over here, a 16 inch round, if you guys don't know that, uh, that means that it's a 16 inch diameter pizza, which means its radius is eight inches, which means its area is 64 pi inches. So, um, I don't know exactly what that is. So I'm gonna get an approximation here. I'm gonna go to my home screen. 64 pi, and I get 201.06. So this is 201.06 inches. Well, they're not the same price and they're not the same area, so what I need to do is I need to find out um, what the what it is, what's, what's cheaper here. So I can do the division either way. So let's do it this way. Uh, 799 over 120 uh, versus 1099 over 201.06. And again, those are different denominators, so I've got to do the division to find out what my approximations are. So 1099 divided by 201.06, and I get 0 0.05466. And now 799. 799 divided by 120. And I get 0 0.06658. And now the question is, is it better to have a small number or a big number? Well, it depends on what the situation is. So ours is cost per square inch. So that's what the division was that I just did, cost per square inch. So do you want to pay a higher cost per square inch or a lower cost per square inch? Well, I'm hoping you want to pay a lower cost per square inch. So check mark that 16 inch round pizza for 10.99 is a better deal than that uh, rectangular pizza for 7.99. Good? Okay. Uh, so next one, we're going to do uh, a modeling problem this way, and we've talked about this before. Uh, it says, how long does it take a ball to drop 1,200 feet? So I take a ball way up in the air, and I drop it 1,200 feet. How long does it take to hit the ground? Well, you guys know that that projectile motion is negative 16t squared plus vt plus h sub 0. And you're like, Miss Bells, why am I using that? Because I didn't throw that up in the air. I'm like, no, I just dropped it. So if I throw it up, then V is positive. If I throw it down, then the V is negative. But if I drop it, then the velocity is zero. I'm not adding anything to it. I'm just letting gravity take hold. And if I let gravity take hold, then my equation for this should be that H, which is going to be zero, because I want to know when it hits the ground, equals negative 16 t squared. The velocity in this case is zero, so that component of this problem just drops away. And then initial height is 1,200. Well, if I move this 16 t squared to the other side, then any object that I drop would look like this. 
so that 16t squared is equal to the distance that I want it to fall. So how do I find out how long that is? I divide by 16 and square root it. So here we go. On 1200 divided by 16, enter. i got to hit enter first. And then raise that to the 0.5 power. That's a square root. And I can see that it will fall for 8.66 seconds. So the time is 8.66 seconds. So then likewise, because a lot of this times we're going to say, hey, given one variable, find the other variable, or vice versa. What if I said, I know that something dropped for 15 seconds. How high was it up originally? Well, that simply means that the 15 goes into here. And I can solve for the height, right? This this 1200 was initially the, the starting height, so let's do it this way. So 15 squared times 16, I would know that that object had to fall from a height of 3600 feet in order for it to be in the air for 15 seconds. Is that good? So again, so the next thing that I've looked at is uh, given a scenario, can I write an equation? If I have an equation, can I use that equation to get me some stuff. And if I wanted to, I could, I could graph that and, uh, and just look at the, the model as it goes. Okay. So how about this one? So this is data again. So this is what I want you to try and do right now. I want you to try and take this data and stick it in your graphing calculator. So you're going to pause the video in just a second, stick it in your graphing calculator, look at the data and then determine, Hey, I think that this might be a line or a uh, uh, parabola or a cubic or a something. What do I think it is just based on the way it looks? Okay, so stop it and enter it into the calculator now. And once you get that done, pull it back up and, and I'll start here. So like literally stop the video. Thanks. Okay, so we're back. Did you do time went on, right? So I'm going to go ahead here to stat and to edit and I'm going to put the data in. So I got 4, enter, 5, enter, 6, enter, 8, enter, 12, enter. Notice I jumped a few on the X's so that they weren't just going up by 1's each time. 8, enter, 19, enter, 34, enter, 76, enter, and 208, enter. So uh, go to my Y equals. I want to make sure that that's gone. Poof. Uh, my stat plot still should be on a scatter plot, and that's what I want to see. I just need to get a window that matches this data. So I look over here. My X's go from 4 to 12. So... Oh, 0 to 15, doesn't that look great? I'm pausing, I'm waiting, giving you time. My Y's go from 8 to 208, so let's go from 0 to 220. Good deal. My Y, oops, sorry. <laughs> X scale, don't want that to be 0, that won't work. Um, let's make the X scale 2. Uh, that means it's going to put a little dash mark every 2, going up to 15. Uh, y min 0, Y max 220. And I'm going to do my Y scales in increments of 50, just because that just means it puts a tick mark every 50 going vertically up my screen. Uh, so graph. Oh, uh, is that a straight line? You're like, no, that's not a straight line, is it? Good deal. So that's got some curvature. So I don't know if that curvature is exponential. I don't know if that curvature is quadratic. I don't know if that curvature is cubic. I don't know how it's really, uh, really working out like that. So... What I'm going to do is, I know it's not a line, uh, it's probably a curve, so I'm going to try this. So I'm going to go stat, calc, and I'm going to say, hey, how about the first most basic curve, a parabola? Maybe it's that, and L1, L2, I'm going to store my regression equation in Y1 again, so that's, here's my buttons, vars, Y vars, function, Y1, and calculate. Oh, ooh, look, perfect. That says that my R value is one, or this is a 100% perfect fit for this equation. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that down right now. So my A in front of the X squared term is two. So my equation is Y equals two X squared uh, minus seven X plus four. Two X squared minus seven X plus four. Perfect, 100% match up so that when I hit graph, you can see, look, nailed those boxes, didn't it? Went through every single one of those things. Yay. 
Okay, so quit that, clear that, all good. Okay, so now um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about how how do I use my graphing calculator to solve uh, a quadratic. Well, I have a couple different options on this. One, I can literally just graph these two things. So this is a parabola, so I can just uh, graph uh, using y1 and y2. So left side of the equation in y1, right side of the equation in y2, and find intersections. Good deal. So this is a parabola, and this is a parabola, and I want to see where those two parabolas touch. <coughs> and it's possible that they don't touch ever, and it's also possible uh, that they can touch twice, or maybe even uh, three times. Um, who knows? Let's give it a shot. So I go to my y equals, I go clear. Um, I'm going to turn my stat plot off. Turn that off. So here we go. First one, x squared minus 1 x squared minus 1, and then second one, 16 minus 5x squared, 16 uh, minus 5x squared, and then I'm going to hit zoom 6. We're going to start off with a standard viewing window. So there's one parabola. Oop, there's the other parabola. I'm going to go a little bit higher so that I can see that. Um, 20? Yeah, let's go 20. Do, 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 do. And then I hope it's pretty obvious that they only intersect in those two places. So I can do that. Second trace, uh, number five, intersection, enter, enter, enter. There's one of them uh, when x is 1.683. Remember that. Write it down, 1.683. And then second trace, number five, intersection. Move my cursor closer to the other one. Enter, enter, enter. And you get negative 1.683. So... Uh, I got plus or minus 1.683-ish. Okay, so here's my other possibility. I can set it equal to 0, which means x squared minus 1 minus 16, when I move the 16 over, plus 5x squared equals 0. So I can graph this, and I can find the zeros of the functions, and watch what amazingly happens right now. So I go here... Uh, and this is going to freak you guys out. This is going to freak you out a little bit. But we can do this. And I typically don't show this till later in the class, but I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to put this in. I'm going to put minus, watch, 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 vars, y vars, function, y2. I'm going to simply subtract y2 from there. Wow. Look at that. And then I'm going to make this one thick. So I hit enter once, make that thick. And next thing I'm going to do, watch this. I'm going to go ahead and turn this one off. Don't delete it. I don't want to delete it. I'm just going to turn it off. So I hit enter on the equal sign, and now you'll see it's not lit up. So watch what happens now. Now you only see the one parabola. And again, that parabola is uh, this equation right here, x squared minus 1 minus 16 plus 5x squared, because I subtracted y2 from that. And now... Um, I'm going to find a zero, so second trace, uh, zero. Um, I'm going to pick something. I'm just going to type it in. Something on the left side of this parabola is zero. I hit enter. Something on the right side of this parabola is six. I hit enter. Do I want to guess? Uh, I don't know. I think it's 1.683. Huh? Look at that, 1.683. So you see I get the same solution even when I find the zeros. Uh, you try it on your own, see if you can get that one. I bet you you do. Okay. So we're getting close. That is five example problems. Uh, I got three things left that I want to be able to show you. So this one says uh, solve graphically uh, two ways, which really is a, hey, you try it. Uh, so the first one I want you to do is I want you to find out where the line intersects the parabola. And then I want you to be able to move this to the other side of the equation and solve for that uh, finding the zeros of the function. So you're going to solve it graphically both those ways, knowing that either way works. In fact, I could move this to the other side also and find zeros of that. So uh, pause the video right now. You try it on your own. And I'm going to go ahead and set up the calculator so that we can check them together in a few moments. OK, here we go. So I'm going to go um, uh, y equals clear and clear and 3x squared minus 7x 
um, and then in y2, 2x plus 4, 2x plus 4, and then zoom 6. Let's see if I can see this picture at all. Oh, it almost looks like it hits. I need to go a little higher. I want to see everything. Uh, so y max 20 again, and there we go. So let's see what my two uh, place points of intersection are. So here's my first one, second trace, number five intersection, enter, enter, enter. Um, looks like I got one at negative 0.392, negative 0.392. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down, negative 0.392. And then I'm going to do the other one right over here, uh, second trace, number five. Move your cursor, move your cursor. Enter, enter, enter. And you can see I get that one at 3.392 or 3.393. Maybe I should have rounded that up. So, and positive 3.393. Good deal. Uh, the next thing you do is set them equal zero. Try the same stuff. And guess what? Check, check. Uh, they work. So, how about this one? Uh, 4x minus 2 uh, equals the square root of 2x plus 6, except uh, this time I'm going to change this. Uh, let's make this 4x plus 20 uh, equals the square root of 2x plus 6. And let's see what we got here. So y equals clear and clear and 4x plus 20, 4x plus 20. And here we go. Let's do uh, square root of 2x. So the square root of 2x plus 6 and graph. Dun, 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 dun. What? Hmm. Look at that. Looks like they don't touch ever because this thing starts right here and goes that way, and this thing goes this way. This is going to keep going higher and higher and higher because it's a line. And this. so technically, this should be no solution. No solution. So the reason why I did this right now is because I want to show you some algebra so that you could figure out this was no solution two ways. One, if you are comfortable enough, 4x plus 20, 20 is way up here, and 4x is a pretty steep line, right? And then this, uh, a negative 3, right? A negative 3 would get me the zero of this function, and then I know it's just a uh, power function looks like that. So I can kind of visually see that. Now you'll get better and better at being able to do that. Uh, so let's show you algebraically how that works out. So I'm going to square both sides of this equation, square both sides, like this. So 4x plus 20 times 4x plus 20 is 16x squared, right? There's a lot of math here, but we can do it. 4 times 20 is 80, so that's plus 160x, because I had two of those, the insides and the outsides of the two things. And 20 squared is plus 400. When I square root this one over here, it simply equals 2x plus 6. Move that stuff over here and I get 16x squared, yes? And then minus 2x, so I get plus 158x. And then minus 6 from that is plus 394 equals 0. And watch what happens. I'm just going to do that. Uh, we did this before, right? The b squared minus 4ac. b squared minus 4ac. I'm going to do the b squared minus 4ac on my calculator right now. So 158 squared minus 4 times 16 times 394. Now, before I hit enter, if you're making the connections to what's going on and the fact that this was no solution, what type of number am I going to get right now? Hopefully, you're going to say that I get a negative number. Look at that, negative 252. Because remember, when this thing is negative, then the only solutions are imaginary. Okay? Uh, so final thing right now on this. So what happens if I give you a picture of a graph and I go, hey, can you go this way? Can you give me which one of these equations must work. And I'm going to say sometimes you can do it without the use of your technology. Okay? 
So here's my viewing window. This is the way the textbook represents it. So it tells you the x's first. So this says this window is going from negative 10 to 10 and from negative 10 to 10. So that's your uh, first set of um, intervals is your x's. The second set of intervals is your y's, your up and down. So how do I determine which one of these things must be right? Well, I should be able to pick it. So I'm going to let you pause the video for just a second and see what you get. Awesome, so hopefully you're back now. Um, so if, uh, if you looked over here to the side, I'm gonna do process of elimination first. Okay, so um, this looks like a line. And if that's a line, then this one's gotta go away, right? And this one's gotta go away, because neither one of those things are linear. That's a parabola, looks like that. And that is a power function that's been shifted down, so that looks like that. And that is not the picture that I have going on here. Okay, so the next thing that I would look at is I'd look right here and I'd go, hey, this y-intercept, if I go down far enough, looks like it has to be down in the negative, I don't know, negative teen range. Ooh, so that means that goes away. Does that make sense? Because that y-intercept is plus 2, so that line has to go through up here. So now I have these two things who both have y-intercepts in the teen range. So now I have to look at their slopes. This is a slope of 3. This is a slope of negative 2. Well, this line definitely has a positive slope so poof that goes away and now i've determined because of my understanding of equations what matches for the graph so i know that video is kind of long but the more we uh, the more we work in this class and the more we do stuff in this class the problems get bigger and bigger and bigger sometimes it takes a little bit longer to be able to do it okay so uh, again Hopefully this was beneficial to you. Uh, I'm going to put this up here again. These are the problems that I did in order based on the time frame in the video. And this is what we did last. Okay. Again, this is Mr. Bells. This is section 1-1 one uh, from pre-calc A, uh, dealing with functions moving between data, graphs, and equations. I'll talk to you later.